My name is Brian Lyles. I'm a cloud engineer at DigitalOcean. And this week we chose to come to this fine country of Germany to talk about something really exciting for us. Um, we are so excited about opening a data center in Frankfurt that we came to Berlin. So um, thank you guys for having us. And what I wanted to do today, or right, before that, I'm, I'm Brian Lyles. Um, I came with my good friend Annie. She's in charge of all production at DigitalOcean. And she asked me to speak on something about Docker. And I said, all right, I'll come up with something. And so this talk came out of me going back and forth with her over vacation of something with Docker. So to get started off here, who here has used Docker? Oh, man. Who here has not used Docker? All right, so are there any Docker experts in the room right now? All right, you might have to leave. No happily. So um, what I've done today is uh, I prepared a little bit of something a little bit different. Um, I see a lot of Docker talks where they're like, you do this, and you type this, and it's crazy, and you can be amazing. But that does not help us deliver good software. So I actually decided to take a little bit of step back and figure out another way to talk about how we can use the Docker, Docker to be more productive as developers. So um, sticking with that, I entitled this talk, Developing with Docker. Um, I don't have an introduction slide. Um, I'm Brian L with a Y, so B-R-Y-A-N-L on Twitter. Uh, follow me, or follow me and then unfollow me. That seems to be the trend lately. People follow, and then I have like 10 less followers this week than I had last week. So we should keep that going so everyone here follow me, and then I'll get happy, and then two weeks later you unfollow me. And we'll keep this moving. So why would anyone want to do this? Um, anyone here use Redis? I'm sure a lot of people use Redis. So I use Redis, but I use Redis with Project A, and I use Redis with Project B. And usually what happens is, um, we all properly namespace most of the time, but usually I use it in Project A with one revision of the software and use it in Project B, and now I have a Redis that I'm using as a data source that has data in it that I don't even understand. And the same thing with MySQL. Um, we use MySQL at DigitalOcean, and I'll have, I don't like having a whole bunch of databases. I want to have one server on port 3306, and that's what it's going to be. I don't want to share with anything else. I want to be able to rage quit my MySQL and know that I did not hurt anything else. So really what I want, what I want is a way to have multiple separate environments that act the same way all the time. So guess what? I found Docker over, well over a year ago, and I've been using it and I've been trying to force my coworkers to use it, and now I should talk to you guys about using it today. Um, words on the slides are just to keep you guys entertained. I probably will not read them. So let's talk about Docker. So it's, it's interesting. Um, I did not know the crowd before we started. So you gotta give the introduction to Docker. What can you do with Docker? And this is gonna be interesting because I'm going to type and I have a mic in my hand. So let's do this. So we have Docker. Um, uh-oh, we don't have Docker. <laughs> That's part of the show, folks. <clears throat> okay, so what we want to do here is we want to go doc. We want to use, I'm using Docker Machine here. I'll talk about more about Docker Machine in a little bit, but we'll just pretend that I'm on a Mac, and you know, with Macs, you can't, you don't have Docker locally. You, you just doesn't, you don't. You can either use Boot to Docker, or you can use this new thing called Docker Machine to actually interact with Docker locally. And you notice I'm not starting about this talk about talking about containers or showing pictures of containers, because guess what? Almost everyone in here raised their hand to say that they've seen Docker. We are past that now. So now we're just gonna hop into this. So I'm actually gonna create a Docker Machine, and, then, and we're doing this live, and that's the best part about this. And I'm just gonna make a one called VirtualBox. Um, use VirtualBox to create a Docker machine. And it's, what it's doing here is, everyone here has seen Docker machine, right? Well, after this talk, you should go download it. It's actually pretty amazing. Um, what it does is it's a binary that uh, Docker people created. You download it, you make it executable. Um, what it will do is it actually works with DigitalOcean, it works with Amazon, it works with um, soft layer, it works with Google, and it will actually boot a box that can run Docker on it. And what I'm doing right now is waiting for my virtual machine to start. And once it starts, let's see here. We forgot to pray to the demo gods before we started this talk. So there we go, it should be good now. Okay, so now I have a Docker 
And what I can do is I can source my, there we go. And now I can do Docker PS and I have Docker. So what we can do now is um, we're, we're going to have Redis. We want to have Redis for our environment. So this is very simple. Let's start from the beginning. How do we get Redis? And now we're going to test how fast the guest network here at SoundCloud is. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring down a Redis container. And doom, doom. there we go. And what I'm doing is I'm downloading, I mean, I'm telling Docker to run Redis. So what it's doing is going out to the public repo when it's getting Redis latest. Um, little secret here is if you did not know that Redis 3 came out last week and you thought that Redis 2.8 was going to be there, you'd be awfully surprised. All right, so this is, while this is downloads, we'll talk about why we do this. We do this because we don't want, we want our dev environments to match our production environments as close as possible. Um, your haphazardly com um, compiled Redis or MySQL, that even if you have Mac and you're using Homebrew, it's still not using the same configuration as your production is. So it, because, we're using, because we're using Docker, we can actually configure, we can actually use the same configuration for our Redis and our MySQLs and our Kafkas or whatever else we're using. So once, I should have pulled this down before. I apologize to you guys. Um, here it comes, look at this. You know, it's, it's because it made me uncomfortable. Now it's going really, really, now I'm talking about it, so now it's slowed down. But we, we're about here. So, and action. So what, now we have a, a Redis. So we can, we can see our Redis, so we can just use our Redis client, and we can go dm dash um, dm ip for dev. Uh-oh. Oops. Uh, oh, I know I didn't do right. Sorry about this. So let's um, let's start over again. We have Redis. We started Redis wrong. I thought you guys were experts. No one saw the typo in my name as I was doing this. What did I do wrong? You didn't expose the port. That's exactly it. I didn't expose the port. Uh, docker kill redis docker rm redis there we go so now going back to this command again mm -hmm. i can go back to my redis cli and now i have my docker so i can do set food to bar and there we go so that's cool and all but the thing what i'm trying to show here is that um you just don't want one docker because you're going to you, I don't know anyone who just works on one single piece of software all day long, unless you work at like a big, big company like Google or IBM or something, or Apple or Microsoft, but no one works on one piece of software. So what we should have is a way to run the same software multiple times, hopefully concurrently. So that's what Docker Machine gives us. So the cool thing is now that I have, so I have DM, so, sorry. so I have this dev Docker Machine, but what if I wanted to create a new one? There we go, now I can have dev2. And I can have Redis running multiple times locally on port 6379 on its real port, so I don't have to do any fancy redirections, but it's on its own IP, so that's why we like Docker. So let's move on. So here's the problem, and as I was saying earlier, the problem is as a developer, I am creating an app that relies on Redis. In order to test that Redis integration works properly, I need to have Redis running. So I did. The, I hopped forward a little bit, and I did this little Docker thing. Then I showed you guys Docker Machine, but you know that's not all Docker Machine can do. So let's see what else Docker Machine can do. Um, not only, uh, so not only can um, it create virtual box months, what we can also do is create one on DigitalOcean. And I'm actually particularly proud of this is because um, the driver that uh, Docker Machine is using, because Docker Machine is written in Go, I, I wrote the, the Go digital driver for, um, the Go driver for DigitalOcean. So I've actually contributed to Docker for this, and I didn't even know it. But, the really, but what I'm saying here is that you can actually take your local environment, 
your local dev environment, the same exact thing, and you can boot it literally in the cloud. So this takes about a minute. So let's talk about something else. Um, I wish I had more pretty pictures for you guys. So, uh, so let's talk about Docker Compose. Um, anyone here familiar with Docker Compose? There we go. Now the hands, a little less hands. So what Docker Compose is, is it was actually a tool called Fig, and it made a big noise. And it's funny, because I think four or five people invented the same tool at the same time. As a matter of fact, a year ago, or a little over a year ago, I created this YAML structure. And I said, this would be a cool way to configure Docker containers. And then this thing called Fig pops up on Hacker News. And I'm like, these guys must have been looking at my repo. But then I looked at it again, and their code was actually predating mine. So maybe I looked in their repo. So let's look at this. Almost there. So this is actually one of the negatives of Docker Machine. It only allows you to do one thing at once. You can't, I can't just go and say, do this in the background and ping me later when you're done. And, I have, and I, I'm sure I could do this. We'll do this and we'll put it in the background. But I don't know what the state of Docker Machine is. We shall see. So in my directory, I have this Docker Compose file. And the reason it looks like I'm fumbling around in my shell is because normally I didn't want to use, I didn't want to show you guys my Docker machine configuration, but I also didn't want to bring two machines. And I tried to boot um, VirtualBox on a DigitalOcean VM earlier, and it didn't work out exactly as well as I thought. So I created another user locally. But then um, I tried to configure ZS, I'm a, I'm a Z shell user, and I tried to configure my Z shell, and that didn't work. So I just exec bash, and it didn't break, so I just kept it here. So that's why I have a bash 3.2. I'm not a Luddite. All right, so now we have this Docker Compose. So what we want to do here is we're going to, um, the cloud. We're going to change our environment. VM active on the cloud. We're going to change our environment to um, the on the cloud. So on the cloud, this line right here. I'm sorry, I'm using, um, this is not the best set of colors for, uh, Ooh, go with that. There you go. So now I'm using on the cloud right here. And that means I'm, I'm using DigitalOcean. So when I do Docker PS, that I'm on DigitalOcean. So now when I run this Redis thing here, so now when I run Redis again, it's actually going to download it off the internet. But it's now it's not on my machine. It's on DigitalOcean. And you notice that it's like a whole crap ton faster. So um, this is my plug for using DigitalOcean today. And actually, and this is the cool thing, is I created this in our new Frankfurt data center. So this is the kind of speeds that you guys would see. It's not, this is not one of our New York City data centers. So we're going to show Compose in a second. Actually, we'll just skip this. So back to my Docker Compose. So Docker Compose is YAML. And the cool thing about YAML that makes it better than uh, JSON is that you can put comments in it, and it actually still compiles. Um, so what I've defined here is, um, so with Docker Compose, you have basically a set of components. You're, compo you're composing a set of components. And I've named my first component Redis. And all I've done is I've said, I'll get rid of this. We'll do that later. Um, we're going to pull an image Redis, and we're going to expose the port. So instead of, so instead of um, actually typing that arcane command line in, I can now do Docker Compose of Redis, of oh, Redis dash D Redis. There you go. Oh snap! I got this. There we go. So. Now I have my Redis container running up on DigitalOcean. This is not local anymore. And the cool thing is because, I've, because this container is managed by Docker Compose, I don't have to worry about it. I could actually say, do, I could actually just say bring it up or shut it down. I don't have to know any of the command lines for it anymore. But that's only kind of cool. Um, what's really cool is um, what Docker Compose allows you to do. And I'm going to move on to this next thing. called Docker Swarm. 
And, and what you guys are seeing is whenever I thought a talk was going to be for an hour, and they said, well, no, finish it in 30 minutes. So you're getting the compressed version of this talk. And we're going to actually have a nice blog post about this for the full content. But I still get to show you guys a lot of stuff, and I still get the live code. And you guys are all paying attention to me, so it's helping me out. So let's actually bring up a swarm. You guys know what Docker Swarm is? Now that, oh, see, now we, no hands are going up. I'm starting to like this. I'm introducing new things to you guys. So what Docker Swarm is, Docker Swarm allows you to bring up, instead of just having one instance, it allows you to say, I'm going to bring up 50 instances of this, and then I can run an application across 50 Docker containers or Docker machines or, or whatever. But the, what the whole point is is that I can now have one configuration and have multiple, a swarm of software running. So let's bring up a Docker swarm. This is going to be interesting. Now we really need to pray to the live demo gods. <laughs> so we got this swarm create. Now we're going to, um, first thing we're going to do is make our local configuration the active. So I'm going to go DM active dev. And then I'm going to go source this environment in. And then I'm going to go, and notice it is the command is Docker machine, but Docker machine is hard to type. So I, I just aliased it. So DM, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a swarm. And I don't know who copied who, if the, if the um, CoreOS guys copied the, copied the uh, Docker guys, or the Docker guys copied the CoreOS guys, but this is very interesting that whenever you create a CoreOS cluster, it's, pretty, it's a, a very similar process. So what this does, it downloads a con Docker container, and it generates a token. It goes out to some service on the internet, and it generates a token. So what you're going to see when this thing at the end, this is your token. And what happens is, um, whenever you're going to create a, we're going to create a master, and we're going to use this token to say that I'm the master of this cluster. And then we're going to create another, we're going to create two more um, members, and they're going to join that cluster, and we'll be able to control them. So let's do this. And what I'm doing here is I'm saying that I'm creating a swarm, and then this is a swarm master, and a swarm discovery equals token, this new thing that we created here. And I'm just going to call it Swarm02 Master. And what it's going to do is go out to DigitalOcean, and it's going to create a Swarm Master. And this is the, one of the downfalls, and this is why they say only run it in development, because I really wish I could go, say, create a Swarm Master and create me 50 more um, Swarm Minions. And it should just do it all in one command, and hopefully do it all concurrently. But the problem is, when you're going to see this, is that I have to create this one. In our, in our create process, it's, it's pretty complex, but it takes you know, 45 seconds. And if I have to create three times 45 seconds, that's um, 135 seconds, which is two minutes and 15 seconds. So that's, that's a long time. So we're only going to create a few here. And while we're doing that, I you know what I should have done? I should have done this in Tmux. Then I could have done them all at the same time. So, you might, um, so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to um, not have slides. I want to show you someone typing. That's the problem that I find in a lot of these talks is that we have slides of things of theory. But what I want to show is that um, all these commands are very approachable and actually not very hard. Um, I have notes here only because I wanted to do things in a certain order. But um, to create a swarm, is very simple. You create. You just basically say, "Is a swarm." I'm creating a master, and here's my and here's my discovery. Whenever we do the minion for this swarm, in about 30 seconds, um, I'm going to drop swarm master and change the name, and that's going to be about it. And in between the time, I'm actually going to launch Tmux too, so we can do more than one thing at a time. But you need this internet connection to, to configure the token and stuff, right? 
Yes, you do need it. You do. So you see where it says the, 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 the swarm discovery? I haven't read the code for that, but um, if I was using this in production, I don't want to use their token and their discovery service. Um, I would actually want to use my own discovery service. So I think when you're playing around, yeah, it's a pretty long, I mean, that's probably based, that number is based on a UA. I'm sure it is, um, it'd be fine, but I, I wouldn't use this in production. And they, and they identify themselves by saying on their pages that this is all experimental, you should not use it. All right, but any more questions real quick? Well, all right, well, we'll make another one then. So the best part about these kinds of talks is that not all technology is super sexy. Some of it's just functional. And um, this is why we get paid the big bucks, I guess. I don't know. But my interface is better than this one. But I, no, I still think it's useful, though. I, I think this is really, really useful in that we can create these, um, we can create this, this cluster. And it's not, it's not super difficult. But while that creates, let's go back to slides. And I, I'm I'm a plague. Look at my look at my um my my tabs here. I don't even know what my problem is. And this is actually pretty good. I only have one window up. So so what else do we have? We have building Docker images. We're going to show. We're going to build a Docker image after we do this. After those two come up, and then I'm going to talk about hosting Docker images. And I'm going to show you something you probably did not know about um about uh, Docker registry. I I know this guy knows all about the Docker registry. He probably wrote it. I don't know. Did you, no, so I'll, I'll show you something about Docker Registry running it locally. Um, but while that's running up, I, I do want to talk about, um, yeah, this is, this, is, this is kind of fun, and I'm showing you the latter side of Docker. But um, really, what I want to show here, because I have about eight more minutes, um, what I want to show is that um, we are using this kind of technology to build our cloud, and we are happy to be here. We're going to do this all week in different forms. Um, they won't be all as um, quirky as this one. Um, but showing you how to leverage DigitalOcean to actually build your cloud. And um, I'm not going to make the big sell, but I will say that um, we, it's not just a, a cloud of, um, we're not just giving you ping power pipe, you know, we're not just giving you compute network storage. We are giving you the other side that a lot of other companies don't give of knowledge. Um, what I found, and maybe this is just Google getting me, is that when I search for random things on the internet um, and they're technical related, and I, I go looking at the article, I scroll up and look in the address bar, and it, and it says community.digitalocean.com. Um, so we are trying to um, fill in all sides of the puzzle there. So now my second one is coming up. Now my first one is coming up. Low internet. So, all right, well, I think um, this is not gonna come up quick enough. Oh, well, here we go, about 30 more seconds. So I'll give you guys another little story about Docker Registry. Um, anyone here know what Docker Registry is? So you've used it. So the Docker, the big Docker hub on the internet, I don't know what the, the URL for it is, but that's basically an interface for Docker Registry. When you do a Docker pool, it goes out to a registry. By default, it goes out to the main one. Um, hopefully, anyone making money with their software is not using the public one. Um, don't push your goodies out to the rest of the world because the rest of the world can see your goodies. Um, what you can do is you can actually download and create your own Docker registry locally. And it's actually as simple as running Docker run registry and map the ports. But the problem is, is that you can run it locally, but it wants to be run secure because we, we want to run everything over HTTPS. But if you're running a Docker machine locally, why are you running HTTPS? It doesn't configure it for you. Or you could probably figure it and then do forwarding through map ports and all that. But no, I'm a lazy developer and I don't want to do that at all. So how do we get around that? So let me show you guys something pretty neat here. I don't know what, see I told you my, it's all messed up. We're back on bash. And we had to source our profile too. I don't even know what's going on here. Should have got a 
Should have got a Dell. All right, so let's go to Documents and Docker Demo. So we're in the right directory. Let's see if this one works. Um, then we can go DMSSH to dev. No, alias. Alias DM equals Docker that machine. DMSSH to dev. Um, so this is the this is the server that runs it. It is boot to Docker. They co-opted it. So if you go into Etsy and you look at init D and you look at Docker, you'll notice that it's just basically a, a, a start script. Um, all you need to do, and here's the secret if you're, if you're keeping notes, is I take this line right here, this extra args line, and I'll just paste it here. And and I will, uh, there we go, we'll just save it right there for a second. I'll edit it not as root. So I want to look up ETH0, so 192, 168, 99, 100, we want to remember that. So I will show you this real quick and then I will bow and move. So what we want to do here is um, we want to go docker run, um, we'll give it a name of the registry and we'll run it in the background and we'll map 5,000 to 5,000. Oops, and then we'll call it registry. There we go. So we're bringing the Docker registry. So now we basically, this is all you need to have um, Docker serve your containers locally. And the cool thing about this is that you can hook it up to your CI and when you build something, you, you actually create your own Docker file. You create it and take your binary, you put it in directory, and then you just basically run this and you push, this is gonna run forever, but you push, um, you push it into your own local and then you can just serve for your own local. I'm, I'm sure everybody here is doing that. No one is pushing off to get this off the internet. Please tell me no one is doing this. Are you doing this? All right. So, so I think our little exploration, I'm going over my time almost here, but our little exploration of Docker is done. I just wanted to show you guys random Docker commands for a little while. Um, any questions? All right, well, thank you then.